Hi everyone and welcome to another landscape diorama tutorial. I love these landscape dioramas and I've tried my hand on a stone bridge for the first time and I hope you enjoy this video. My name is Louis and I'm a farmer from South Africa. And first off, I start with the leaves and branches of the willow tree because I have to determine the scale of the rest of the diorama by the size of the willow tree. I brush the loose seeds from the ore so that only the empty husks remain. When I saw these grass seeds, I knew I would one day make a willow tree out of it. I attach the seeds with wood glue to a thin piece of wire and gently press it onto the wire. Then I add some more wood glue onto the wire with, and add some smaller pieces of seeds to hide the wire. So here's a close-up view of my willow tree branches and leaves. I painted the leaves a dull green and I cupped some of the leaves in my hand to make the spray job easier. I made a rough sketch of what I was planning to do. These are the lovely pieces of weathered wood that I'm going to use for the trunk of the willow tree. I just love to work with this rubberized product and I mix it up with sawdust and I apply it to the trunk to simulate bark. I think I could have added a little wood glue, but this product sticks, sticks well enough on its own like it is, but especially on wire trees, because it's rubberized, it's flexible and doesn't break as easily. I made sharp vertical grooves in the paste so it looks more like bark. I attached this piece of wood with super glue to the original trunk to give it a little more height. The tree has to have bark all the way to the areas where the, there is life it's in order to translocate the nutrients and the water to the leaves. After a test fit of a couple of leaves, I gave all the areas with, uh, with bark on it a light brown wash. I used super glue gel with an accelerator to fix the leaves onto the branches. Once I determined the height of the willow tree, I placed it on the board there in the background. I could start on the build of the bridge. Here I'm cutting XPS foam into about 5mm thick pieces and then I cut them up into different sizes and squeeze them in my hands to give them this nice stone definition.
Another method to make lovely stone blocks is to press a ball of tin foil onto the strips of XPS foam. I concentrate it on the sides to make it flat on the sides. And if you cut these strips up into different sizes, they make lovely stone blocks. I cut the pieces for the archway in the same length. Then I give them a slight tapered edge and fit them, dry fit them onto the archway to make sure there are no gaps. It took me about three tries before I could get that tapered shape correct. Here I dry fit them, I start with a keystone in the middle. And I'm using hot glue to fix all the pieces to the bridge. You can see that I'm applying the hot glue to the piece first. But an important lesson I learned later during the build of the bridge was that it's much better to apply the glue to the bridge first and then place the piece onto the bridge. In that way you don't have those hundreds of annoying strings of hot glue that you need to remove later on. Watch how clever I am here. And here's the end result of the stonework. I start with all my methods on the back and on the walkway to see the results first before I try them on the front side of the bridge so that I don't make any mistakes on the front side. I'm applying a thick layer of Mod Podge and make sure it goes into all the gaps and later on I remove all the excess to make sure that all the details remain. Here I'm removing the excess and wipe it onto a paper towel. You can see clearly that the details remained after the step. I decided on a raw sienna for the base coat. I'm covering the whole front side. You can see I already tried it on the back. Then I'm using these acrylic colors to get the subtle variance in different stones. First is the light brown. I mix it up with white. Next up is the burnt sienna, also mixed with white. And after that, I'm applying the grey and I cover about 40 to 50% of the stones to get the variance in colors that I need. I'm using this Tamiya Hobby Paint to do a heavy dry brush to blend the various colors together. It's quite a heavy brush. Um, I'm trying to blend and hide all the various colors but you'll see in the end that most of the colors were hidden by the black ink and Mod Podge mix that I applied.
This is the result after the heavy dry brush. I then applied a very light white dry brush only on the very surface of the stones to resemble sunlight falling on it. For the final layer on the bridge, I used acrylic ink and applied it with this absorbent brush. The mixture I'm, I'm applying here is black, diluted black ink mixed with a third Mod Podge. And after applying it, I used a paper towel to remove the excess from the raised areas so that the black ink remains in the recessed areas. I used Mod Podge matte with the ink. I placed the bridge and the tree in the positions that I want in the final result. And I draw out the lines for the river and for where the tree would stand. Then I'm starting to build up the landscape with ordinary polystyrene that will be covered with sculpting material that I made myself. It was egg cartons that I ground up with a blender and added plaster of Paris in a 50-50 ratio. There I built up the riverbed towards the back and now I'm going to cover the whole terrain with the sculpting material. After the sculpting material dried for about 48 hours, I did my first water test to see if I will be happy with the result of what I had in mind. I wasn't happy at all with what I saw, so I dried it all up with a paper towel and I could clearly see where the water flowed because I mixed the water with ink. Then I draw out the areas where I needed to build up the landscape. And here I'm applying an, another layer of sculpting material. And there I'm filling up the hole where the tree will stand because I need to lift the tree so that the leaves doesn't hang into the resin. And here I'm cutting out polystyrene templates for the bridge because the bridge will have to be removed again and again. The same with the tree. I made a template for the tree so that I can still work on the area. And here I did a second water test. Also water mixed with ink and I was much more pleased with the end result. With the template of the tree in place, I started to build up the area around the base with sculpting material. For the rocks that will go onto the side of the diorama, I mixed up a mixture of plaster of Paris and banged on the table for the air bubbles to surface. The mold I made was from pieces of coal that I got from a coal laboratory and I think the end results look quite nice and here I'm sticking them down onto the side wall with the hot glue gun. I prefer to use the small hot glue gun otherwise the polystyrene melts. And to fill up the gaps between the rocks, 
I mix up a very soupy mixture of plaster and use a syringe to apply the plaster between the rocks. Before applying the washes, I give the whole area a good soaking of clean water. Otherwise, the plaster absorbs the paint right away and you don't get good results. These are the materials I'm using for the landscape. First I start by painting the riverbed with Mod Podge Matte and then apply the fine pebbles of different sizes onto the riverbed. And then I use the coarse sand to make the rocks look more embedded into the sand. I spray a mixture of Mod Podge mat and water on the surrounding areas before I apply the finely sifted sand and tile grout mixture. I sprayed the whole area with isopropyl alcohol before I applied a layer of mud podge mat and water mixture to fix it all down in place. I made these little dams out of clear silicon sealant and sealed it up with Mod Podge gloss to make sure those dams won't leak when I pour the resin. Now over to the vegetation that will cover most of the terrain. This is sisal rope that I left in an acrylic paint mixture overnight. It will be mostly used for the reeds on the river banks. I'm also using different herbs and teas to make the moss. That is a green tea and parsley that I grind up into a fine powder and use it for moss. The results from the green tea weren't satisfying. So eventually I mixed up the green tea and the parsley and got better results from that.
Here are a few natural plants that I use to decorate the rocks on the side. To apply the longer, heavier, static grass, like the sisal rope, I apply a thick layer of Mod Podge mat to make sure the grass stands up straight. I first apply the heavy sisal rope and afterwards I apply the normal static grass in between. I use the handheld vacuum cleaner to remove all the loose fibers. Because of the weight of the sisal rope that I'm going to use as the reeds on the riverbank, I'm taking a new approach here with the liquid rubber. It dries much faster and it holds the fibers much better. And you can see it's much easier to work with. It dries clear and it won't have any effect on the resin pour that will follow later. In my opinion, the liquid rubber is a much better medium than PVA glue to work with, with these heavy fibers. I think I will use this medium much more often in the future. And once those heavy fibers are stuck into that liquid rubber, it's almost impossible to remove it. It holds the fibers much more quickly than the PVA glue and dries faster. And I certainly think that's the medium for me to go with. To break up the greens, I painted some diluted brown ink onto the reeds to get a little variance in color. I decided to use some coarser sand around the edges of the grass and to break up that sharp line of the static grass. I used these black wattle leaves to make the ferns on the side, on the rocks and on the bridge. The moment I picked those leaves, I sprayed it with spray adhesive and they kept the color and the shape and it makes a pretty nice fern. I used PVA glue to apply the moss onto the rocks and onto the breach. This is Aragrosta's stiff grass that we use on the farm for feed for the animals. And I'm using the same method as with the reeds on the riverbank. 
I stick just stick it into the liquid rubber and it stands up straight immediately. To make sure that everything is stuck in place over the whole terrain, I spray everything with isopropyl alcohol and then afterwards I'm using the Mod Podge mat and water mixture. I'm using masking tape to make a barrier for the dam and seal it off with PVA glue to make sure there are no leaks. I used the cup of a previous successful resin pour and transferred the marks onto a new cup, mixed up my resin in, and in that way I'm sure that the resin will be a successful pour. After leveling everything out, I started pouring the, the resin at the back and let it flow down naturally to the pond area. I poured a little more resin than I planned so I had to quickly build up the river banks and seal it with Mod Podge. I made some final improvements to the old willow and it was now ready to go into its place where it belongs. Finally I added some moss onto the rocks closest to the water. I should have used normal PVA glue but after I gave it a quick blue everything was looking fine. I'm leaving you with a couple of images of the final result. I hope I could have been of any help. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I see you soon. Thanks for watching.